There's no getting around the fact that the first Venom, despite all of its flaws, was a massive hit, somehow creating a successful Spider-Man spin-off with neither hide nor hair of the titular web crawler. And despite its somewhat neutered tone and horror-inflected story, it was a good enough film to get audiences in seats to see the CGI goo monster battle it out with other, slightly angrier goo monsters. So, fast forward three years, and here we are with Venom Let There Be Carnage, with Tom Hardy reprising his role as both Down On His Luck reporter Eddie Brock, and the bundle of sunshine latched onto him calling itself Venom, and Woody Harrelson starring as Cletus Cassidy, rocking a whole new head of hair, having been fired after his end credits scene in the first film due to an unspecified McDonald's lawsuit. Now for a film marketing itself as a Venom vs Carnage movie, you'd imagine it would be hard to mess up, right? Black Goo Monster fights Red Goo Monster. We've done it before, how hard could it be? Let's be real, it's not completely awful, but it's also not breaking any records anytime soon. When Venom and Carnage are on screen together, tearing and biting at each other, it's thoroughly entertaining. However, it felt like the film had two separate stories jammed together in a less than cohesive way. One focuses on Eddie and his connection to Cletus Cassidy, leading up to and after he becomes the monster Carnage and the consequences that become of this. And the other story is Eddie and Venom realising their honeymoon period is over and they want a divorce. It's part of the first movie again, albeit done better this time round, but also feeling more redundant. Why are they arguing about Venom being allowed to eat people when it was completely okay by the end of the first movie? The acting was a lot better this time round. Tom Hardy easily steals the show once again and is one of the standout performances within the movie. The man could be recorded sitting in front of a mirror and be able to come up with an interesting and captivating character. His physical comedy and dialogue delivery for both leads is on point and honestly makes the film very entertaining at times. The script takes Eddie and Venom's back and forth and makes it one of the more entertaining parts of the whole film. Hardy's exasperated face as CGI black goo moves around him is commendable to say the least. He's joined on the other side by Woody Harrelson, who's probably one of the only actors who could have thrown himself into a role like this and meet Hardy on the same level of insanity. He plays Cletus as part romantic, while also channeling every single serial killer known to man. He's given a decent amount of screen time, but he requires a lot of explanation, unlike Eddie. Carnage, however, doesn't come into play for a good third to over halfway into the movie. His name may be in the title of the movie, but he certainly doesn't feel like a part of it which is kind of a shame for those who are fans of the character. Carnage is less of a character in his own right in this movie, and more of just an obstacle that Eddie and Venom need to get over so they can come to terms with each other. Shriek is another character that gets almost no build-up, and even less screen time. She has her own subplot that feels like it was a much bigger deal in previous drafts. However, it very much gets sidelined in this one, and the relationship between her and Cletus is supposed to be extremely important but the movie doesn't give us the time we really need to see that. A great deal of time is spent on whether it's more important to be the strongest physically, or the strongest as a team. And while most superhero movies deliver this message in the most ham-fisted way possible, Let There Be Carnage actually carries some on-screen emotional charge in between the broken buildings and multiple stabbings. The movie truly shines in its well-timed moments of emotion and in the fight between Venom and Carnage. The relationship between Eddie and Venom is treated like an actual relationship, and while director Andy Serkis largely depicts this through a comedic lens, it still leaves you with a smile on your face when the two finally reunite. This is to say the film may secretly be a rom-com, focusing on the bond that Eddie and Venom share. They fight, flirt, break things when they argue, crack terrible puns, and give each other useless advice. They part ways briefly, and vow never to see each other again, all because Venom isn't brave enough to say, Eddie. I love you. The film even acknowledges the multiplicity of Venom by having him deliver a rambling, nonsensical speech about himself at a rave, which if I'm being honest, was a big mood. However, this does leave it feeling tonally at odds with itself, when in the midst of this couple breaking up and getting back together, a serial killer with a symbiote is looking for them. You know, Cletus and Carnage. Oh. At the end of the day, the main reason why people will go and see this movie is the action, and that is the one aspect of the movie I can say didn't disappoint. It's frantic and fast-paced, however it does still suffer from third act syndrome that most superhero movies suffer from. Despite these flaws, however, it's able to remain fun and engaging throughout, with Cletus and Eddie both joining in just as much as Venom and Carnage do, even taking notes from Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3. All in all, Venom Let There Be Carnage isn't going to change anyone's life, and it doesn't bring anything new to the table. If you liked the first one, you'll like this one but it does what it wants to do and doesn't stretch itself needlessly out. 
When it's tonally consistent, it helps shine a light on how much fun Hardy is having with this completely insane performance, which is definitely a good thing. It's fast, fun, and there's hints of a genuine connection between the two heroes that was definitely lacking at the end of the first film. The filmmakers at Sony seem to have realised that the best scenes are when Tom Hardy is playing off a voice that only he can hear. If they get a third movie, maybe they'll strike the balance that they're going for. For now, this one's fine. The fans are sure to enjoy it. Overall, I give the film a 6 out of 10. Bring back Taboo, you cowards.